Hello. Hello. Welcome back. We're just going to take a couple minutes and let everybody get signed on here once the video starts streaming. So Heidi is with me today. She looks exactly like Sophia from last time, but don't get them confused. <laughs> I'm Gretel. I'll introduce you to Gretel. Right. We have an ongoing competition to one-up each other's outfits to match the theme, and uh, she won today. I think I won this <laughs> this week. It still doesn't compete with the meatball shirt from last time, though. No. <laughs> no. So while we wait to get all of our viewers online, um, I have some fun Swiss cheese facts. Okay. So let's see. Uh, did you know that Germany is actually the largest consumer of Swiss exported cheeses? Really? Yes. That's amazing. Receiving just under half of all Swiss cheese exports. Uh, Italy takes 16% and the US 13%. 13? Wow. <laughs> Shocking. Um, let's see. There are more than 700 varieties of Swiss made cheeses. phone is ringing. <laughs> okay, how many people are on? Are we good? Uh, no? We have 19. 19. Ooh, okay. All right, we're doing good. So, other fun facts about cheese. Switzerland is the self-proclaimed cheese capital of the world, largely in part due to that 700 varieties of cheese I mentioned. And uh, Swiss cheeses are all natural. They don't use any sort of artificial anything in any cheese, and actually a lot of them are lactose-free. So good. That's why that's so, my favorites. Right. So Gruyere, Emmentaler, lactose-free, great for pretty much everyone in my family. <laughs> Hi, Gina. Hi, Gina. <laughs> Okay, so since it seems like we have most of our people on, in case you hadn't noticed based on our lovely outfits today, this is our Swiss Alpine production. So this week, um, our event is for Crow. I know uh, Jeff told me Peter has taken many a little critter to crow yes. over the years. Yes, we call uh, him Dr. Doolittle, so <laughs> that's one of his favorite place. Thank you, Gina. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I, I actually helped a guy from Crow catch a baby bald eagle that had fallen out of its nest in my yard one time. Aww. So that's my claim to fame. So Crow is located um, on Sanibel Captiva Road, just past Ding Darling, for those of you who don't know. And they have served the wildlife of Southwest Florida for almost 50 years now. So each year, Crow cares for approximately 3,500 wildlife patients, including more than 200 species. Uh, they offer immediate on-site critical care and they offer exhibits designed to teach visitors about the impacts of invasive species can have on our native and migratory wildlife. And I believe they also have several drop-offs around this, the county as well. So if you can't make it all the way out to Sanibel, like Blue Coral, Pearl. Coral Vet. Coral Vet, Blue and Pearl. Yep. So you can go to crowclinic.org to discover ways to volunteer and donate to this wonderful nonprofit in our area. Okay. Are you do you want to start with your wine or do you want to start with I a cheese? I started with my wine. So oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we skipped ahead and already started with the wine. So, these both of these wines are from 10 Span Vineyards in California. Um, the name comes from uh, the California Condor, which is known for its 10-foot wingspan. So where they are located on California's central coast, the cool climate um, allows for the grapes to ripen slowly over time, giving a more well-rounded flavor to the wines. So you opted for Chardonnay today. Yes. It is very hot out. I wouldn't want to red it either. I don't blame you. 
<laughs> I think I saw one of these birds flying over the tennis court yesterday. <laughs> it made me miss the shot. The bird was so big. It, it was a pelican, I think. Not a pelican. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It was like, it was like Jurassic Park. <laughs> Okay, so Sorry. Dawn saw a pterodactyl yesterday, and it's totally the reason she missed that shot in tennis. Yes. Don't question it. <laughs> so Monterey County's notoriously long hang time allows the grapes for this Chardonnay to uh, develop ripe, mature flavors. It is 100% barrel fermented with a rich, elegant layers of butter, cream, citrus, and vanilla. Very, very true. I got to sample this one like a couple weeks ago and was a fan. That is nice. Okay, so since we're on to that, let's go with our first cheese, which uh, actually pairs with the Chardonnay for everyone watching along. Yes, everybody's excited to go wine first. <laughs> so we're going to start. Let me help you turn it around here. Yeah, do this. You got it. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna start with the Emmentaler. So, for anyone who took the plastic wrap off their cheese already and forgot which one's which, Emmentaler will always have its name and usually the producer printed on paper stuck on its rind. So, it's the one with the red print on and, the rind. Um, just any particular knife for that? Um, I would go with this guy. Okay. This is your hard cheese knife. Woohoo! There it is. Yeah, we'll take this little dummy out of there. I propped it up so you could see it on camera. Uh, I'm good. It's hard to talk with my mouth yes, full. <laughs> so, uh, Emmentaler is what you might call the Swissiest of Swiss cheese. So, when you say Swiss cheese, you're, you're really thinking of Emmentaler. That creamy, buttery cheese with the big holes in it oh. that everyone in America just calls Swiss cheese. Now I have a new favorite. <laughs> Every week, Dawn has a new favorite cheese. <laughs> so Emmentaler means it's from the Emmental region. Tal actually meaning valley. So it's the difference between like American and America. Um, Emmentaler, Emmental. So there's your fun language fact of the day. Emmental is a hilly region mostly devoted to dairy farming. Uh, this cheese is pale yellow, the distinctive holes that as a child, I firmly believed mice ate the holes in the cheese. So did I. Okay. I'm glad I'm not alone. Uh, yeah, I was convinced that was legit. It is not. The holes are actually caused by carbon dioxide production during the aging process of the cheese. They just happen naturally. <laughs> Thank a lot more sense than there's like a mouse or a caterpillar in there going to town. I think I read the hungry caterpillar too many times as a kid. Um, so the aroma is sweet and the flavor is nutty and buttery with a slight fruity acidic finish. And as I said, the hard thin rind is always covered in a printed paper. And so you can see like which can cheese maker. Um, because of the paper bonded to it, this is one of the few Swiss cheeses we recommend don't trying to eat the rind. Now when we get to these others, you can totally eat the rind. Just not everyone likes the taste of the rind. Okay. So, it is traditionally made of unpasteurized milk in copper kettles and formed into wheels weighing about 200 pounds. That is like two small people. <laughs> that is a huge wheel of cheese. I actually had like a quarter wheel of Gruyere and uh, was trying to put it on the table and it was too big. It took up too much space because I was going to try to show just how big these cheeses get. Um, let's see, where did I leave off? So Emmentaler, Switzerland, you know, in the past on the French board, on the Italian board, we talked about cheeses and wines that have their little AOP, DOP, um, uh, labels that tell you exactly what the cheese is and that, or the wine, and to have that name, it has to be that cheese made this way in this region. So, Emmentaler, Switzerland is an AOP. Emmentaler has to be made in that region by these cows in this very specific way, and they even measure the holes. 
Uh, <laughs> so the classically aged four months, which is what we have here. Occasionally you'll find the reserve, which is aged for eight months. And again, there are Americanized versions of it, American made Swiss cheese. But when you say Swiss cheese, you're really thinking Emmentaler. So there's your Swissiest Swiss cheese. <laughs> So then we will move on to, I wanted to save the best for last, but because of flavors, it's having to go second. So, oh yeah, put the mustard on there. We got a little mustard and fig chutneys that will come on the Alpine board if you order the whole board. The mustard changes everything. Yeah. Oh yeah, Swiss. like the ham, the mustard, and these cheeses oh, yeah. on like a grilled cheese or something. Oh, yeah. Sign me up. <laughs> so we're going to our little soft one up front there, the Vacherin. This was the cheese that was the reason we had such a late announcement for this one. Oh, yes, this is the special one. The special cheese. And uh... So Vacherin is a washed rind little cheese wrapped in a specially cultivated spruce bark from the area it comes from in Switzerland. Um, it is mild when young. Ours is kind of like, I feel like it's kind of middle ground. Okay. Um, so mild when it's young and it becomes creamy with a hint of forest with age. Right. So apparently the best time to eat Vacherin is actually when the rind starts to turn a little pink and get kind of wrinkly. That's when it's at its soupiest, runniest, strongest tasting. Wow. This one today is a little young. That's wonderful. Isn't it good? Oh yeah. Thank you for getting that. <laughs> it took literally months to get one box of this cheese in. So <laughs> um, so it is a rare and highly seasonal cheese. This one that I did eventually manage to get for us is actually specially made just to export to the United States due to pasteurization laws with the USDA, FDA, and all of that. Um, because typically it would only be slightly thermized milk and it's not aged long enough to uh, meet the standards of the FDA. So this one is an export friendly Vacherin if you actually have it in Switzerland, it's going to be even more complex and intense tasting. Now, I think it was accidental that I got a little bit of this on my cheese. Mm -hmm. What is this? That is thyme. thyme. Just a little sprig of thyme. Oh, it was amazing with the cheese. I'm sure Probably, I accidentally did that, but wow. I was say, it would enhance that uh, woodsy flavor from the spruce bark. So yes. a little sprinkle of thyme on your Vacherin. Um, so it is usually only available October through April because they, the cows, they take the milk to produce Gruyere in the summer. They use the same cow's milk to produce Vacherin in the winter months. So it's only produced when the cows are eating hay and stuff in the barns in the winter. So, oh, and really obscure fun fact, Vacherin must be produced at an elevation of 2,297 feet or higher. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Who, knew? Who knew? Yes, spruce bark, like the spruce tree, they peel away layers of the bark to uh, wrap it in. And uh, Gina wants to know, how did you get it? Um, I ordered it over and over and over again and eventually I got lucky. <laughs> That's basically how that worked. <laughs> she was sweating it waiting for that cheese. Yeah, I thought we were gonna have to do this event without the uh, special. Yeah, the little pieces of Vacherin, everyone got little tiny pieces because they are little tiny cheeses like that big around whole and I only got a couple of them so I had to cut them up in little pieces. Do we have any left? Um, uh, yeah, there's like one or two whole little ones in there. I think we should try to keep it in stock. I will yeah. try my best, mm -hmm. and if I ever can't get more Vacherin, I can usually get from Vermont the Jasper Hill Harbison. 
it is very 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 similar it's wrapped in spruce from Vermont and stuff but I digress La Charin, it's um, kind of a region it's near France um, and vache just meaning cow in French so uh, Switzerland speaks different languages depending on which side they're on it, it, Italian German French so you'll notice that influence in a lot of things um, let's see you want to move let's move on to talking about the red wine which we did not open for you at the moment but the next two cheeses are suggested paired with the uh, the Cabernet so again is the 10 span that California Monterey area um, the long growing season and climate allows the grapes to reach optimal ripeness um, this Cabernet is aged on oak for a year and it is smooth and full-bodied flavors of blackberry cherry and currant so those nice dark jammy fruits and uh, notes of cocoa and tobacco <laughs> I thought Switzerland never took sides. That's funny. <laughs> I like that. Somebody has jokes out there. Oh, sure. Here you go. Never mind. We're getting in to the red wine now. We started off with that Chardonnay, but I'm good right now. <laughs> You good? Yep. All right. So let's see if you taste those wonderful uh, cherry and currant and blackberry flavors. Allison. <laughs> Allison's cracking us up. Uh, they're saying they can't hear you very well. Oh, so well, you yeah. It's shout into my microphone. Hello. There. there see, part. now you got to hear her. Aren't you all happy now? <laughs> How is that? I should stop making her laugh while she's drinking red wine. That is just going to end poorly for me in particular. Shirt. Yeah, <laughs> it's not even my shirt, so that would just be worse. Uh, <laughs> okay, so let's do our Gruyere next. So Gruyere is from the French side uh, Emmentaler, German, Gruyere, French side of, uh, Switzerland there. I'm going with this knife. Yes. The so. Swiss hole knife. Yeah, there you go, the one with the holes in it. Um, that one's for, like, your semi-soft, semi-hard cheeses. And Gruyere's got a nice creaminess, meltiness. Uh, this particular one is the Kaltbach cave-aged Gruyere. So he's aged in the sandstone caves in the Kaltbach or Lucerne region. Uh, Grass-fed, unpasteurized milk and aged for over a year. Uh, it is strong and smooth, fruity and tangy, crumbly, melty, with that distinctive brown rind, which is edible, but it's a really intense flavor. Oh, man. That is amazing. That is so delicious. Great. Does everybody agree? Yeah, the, uh, the cave-aged Gruyere adds a whole nother layer of flavor over just, like, standard Gruyere. So I always go for the Kaltbach Gary cave-aged as much as possible. So how this works is Le Gruyere wheels are aged for about three months, and then the Kaltbach cave masters come around and they select the highest scoring wheels of regular Gruyere to age in their caves. So, and you'll notice there's a little bit of like a crunch. Crystals. Yep. Yeah. In the case of the cave age Gruyere, that is actually salt crystals. Oh. Some cheeses it's protein, some cheeses it's calcium. This one is actually a salt crystal. Um, and Gruyere cheese uh, was dated back to 1115 AD. So, this cheese has been around a while, and it is one of my favorites. I love to cook with it. Fondue, potatoes au gratin, grilled cheese. <laughs> and Jeffrey uses it a lot in cooking. Yeah, yes. it's a great melting cooking cheese. It just adds a layer of flavor to any sandwich. I am a huge fan, and that pairs nicely 
with our Cabernet today. Well, it's so much better than the Gourmet that I purchased in Publix. Not to say Publix doesn't have good <laughs> cheese, but this is wow. Yeah, you can get supermarket Gruyere and it's good. It's good Gruyere. You can even get uh, like Wisconsin made uh, Gruyere style cheeses mm -hmm. and they're tasty. But this cave aged one is just oh. next level. So definitely worth the upgrade for flavor. I'm, see, everyone in the comments is thoroughly enjoying the Gruyere as well. <laughs> yes. It's a good classic cl crowd pleaser. So, and again, that pairs nicely with the, uh, the red. Although, I feel like it could go with the white as well, personally. Yeah. Depending so. on your mood. Would this be good on um, French onion soup? Yes, this is the one they actually, that is typically what they oh, shave over the top of French okay. onion soup and it gets all melty and stringy. Mm. Delightful. Yeah, so <laughs> okay, and then our last cheese of the day is Der Scharf Max. Der Scharf Max? Yeah, the, which literally means the sharp or the spicy Max. I, I just want to know who Max is and why he's spicy. <laughs> so it is very, very similar to an Appenzeller, but like taken to an extreme, if that makes sense. So Studer Cheesery in the Hotswell region uh, came up with this cheese in 2003, which is rare for Switzerland. Uh, in the 1900s, there was the Swiss Cheese Union. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and they highly regulated the production of cheese. Why? <laughs> <laughs> and so they actually would like buy up all the cheese produced, mostly Emmentaler Gruyere, and uh, then price it and export it and ration it out to places. But in 1999, the cheese union collapsed and it allowed cheesemakers to invent new cheeses for a period of time because there was nobody uh, telling them not to. So Charfamax is one of those from that time period where the cheese union fell apart. So it's a brand new kind of style of cheese in the Oppenzeller family, which is very traditional for fondue and stuff. Um, they enrich it with cream. So that's where you get like that extra yes. heavy creaminess. Oh, Oh yeah. Did you get that one over here? Yes. That's the end one? Okay. Um, so it's washed in an herbed brine. So every week they come in, bathe the cheese in this herbed brine, flip it over, and let it keep aging for about five months. So it's kind of got that meaty, savory, salty, sweet, and nutty flavor. It's got a really strong smell when you first unwrap it. Don't let it scare you. Uh, don't be intimidated by the smell. Same with the Telegio from last time. The smell's intimidating, but it's delicious. Uh, <laughs> the comments tonight are my favorite so far of any of our events. <laughs> More of this. Um, so, the, yeah, so compared to like the Gruyere from, you know, 1100 AD, a thousand years later, they came up with Charfamax, and it's, it's definitely incredible. It's delicious. I love the texture of it because it's so shockingly creamy and rich and melty, and then it's got that, like, really intense flavor. So all of these are great with the, you know, fig to add sweetness, the mustard adds zest, Yep, savory and stinky. And again, it goes with the red wine because it really needs something that can stand up to that layer level of flavor. Uh, your average little Pinot Grigio wouldn't handle the Sharfa Max. It's to the max. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I quit. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, you can't quit. So. Oh. Uh -huh. I live here now. I work for life. Um, 
let's see, I still had a few fun facts about Swiss cheese since we've moved our way through the board here. And traditionally, if you're doing like raclette style, um, please don't yodel on camera. <laughs> I did earlier. I did she, yodel for. Christmas. She scared me. I was changing and I came out of the back and she yodeled at me and I, I was very startled. Her I would not yodel on Ken. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, traditionally, you melt up one of these delicious cheeses, you take some ham, you take some Cornish on, dip it in there, put it on some bread, go ham. Uh, so. That's what's on our alpine board here. We got our rosemary ham. We've got this great mustard, which you can kind of see here. Hello. It's a, actually a French mustard, but it's too good to pass up. And the fig chutney, which you'll notice shows up on a lot of our boards because fig and cheese are soulmates. <laughs> so in case you missed the fun facts earlier, most Swiss cheeses are lactose free which is great. There's over 700 kinds of Swiss cheese. The rind on most are safe to eat, even if they're kind of, not everyone likes the taste of them. Uh, and then here's a fun little thing. Since we've been doing these every couple of weeks, and it's probably becoming an overwhelming number of cheeses to keep track of what you liked, what you didn't like, what you thought of them. So we actually have these little books now. They're uh, just $5. So it's 33 pieces of cheese. And uh, I open it up here. So inside is actually where you can write down the name, where it came from, and your personal notes on what you liked about the cheese. And you can keep track of the cheese you like, the cheese that scared you, the cheese you want to have again. And uh, yeah. Yep, so it's got um, a little flavor wheel down here where you can color in uh, the different... Oh yeah, oh yeah, somebody got one today. Um, we have them for olive oil and beer and stuff as well, but uh, the cheese one is great for doing all of these little tastings so we don't get confused about what cheeses we have. And uh, this is my favorite part. Uh, grass-fed Jersey milk from a century farm in Trout Lake, Washington is in the cheese colored ink on this book. So I guess the white printed on the front actually has milk in it, which just blows my mind. Um, <laughs> weird fun thing of the day. Um, okay, do you does anybody have any questions about these cheeses, about other similar things? Let's see, where'd it go? I had a page that somebody had written a few questions on. Do, 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 do. There we go. Um, yeah, there are American versions of Swiss cheese. Uh, and that's usually when you just see it, like, it'll just say baby Swiss or Swiss cheese at the supermarket. It's usually made here in the States. If it says Emmentaler, Switzerland, Emmentaler, AOP, then it's the imported one. Yeah, see, everyone loves that Gruyere. So good. Um, <laughs> wash rind, again, uh, you'll notice there's a lot of wash rind cheeses in Europe, um, and they tend to have these distinctively brown and pink kind of sticky feeling rinds. And, uh, they're usually bathed in a brine or a wine. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Oh, so are all of these cheeses lactose free? The Emmentaler and the Gruyere and like the Charfamax are for sure. The Vacherin, not so much. It has to do with how long the cheese is aged and what bacterial culture they use to start the cheese, blah, 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 science. Um, so... <laughs> Uh, so yeah, oh, the harder ones are going to be lactose-free, the Vacherin, your soft cheeses, not so much. Thank you, uh, Patty, said, uh, our, yeah. my first event, full of great knowledge. Excellent. You're moving it now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was trying to catch up. Um, <laughs> the comments come in too Thank fast and I can't read them. Well. Um... 
So since Vacheron is rare and hard to get, what would be a similar replacement? There are a couple domestically made replacements. I mentioned the Harbison. There's another one called Green Sword uh, that one of the uh, American cheese makers make, and they've got the bark wrapped, and they're very similar. I personally am a huge fan of the Harbison myself. Um, yeah, Don liked that one too. Um, do we always have the Charfamax? Uh, right now we have plenty of it, so hopefully I can keep that coming in. Um, I have a backup replacement type of cheese I can get in. It's a little less stinky, same texture, but I'd like to stick with the Max as long as we can. It's delicious. Um, okay, so we covered our four cheeses. We talked about our little book, um, the two wines, in the comments. Slurring? Who's slurring? <laughs> I'm not slurring, I stutter. <laughs> it's fine, it adds to the charm. <laughs> so, okay. If there's no more questions, comments, or concerns, did you have anything to add, Dawn? No, thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in. It was always a fun day. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Oh, what's the best way to store the soft and hard cheeses? Um, so the softer cheeses you want to protect a little bit more. Uh, you'll notice when I sent the Vacheron home with all of you, uh, it was on a little plate and that was to keep it from getting crushed. And the harder cheeses um, you can, we wrap them in plastic, we do have bees wrap, there's wax paper you can use, um, and that helps keep them fresh, keep them from drying out, but you don't want to suffocate them. And the hard cheeses, like, you could leave the Zementaler and Gruyere sitting out for the rest of the afternoon, and it'll be fine. The Vacherin will fall apart on you. Allison, does that mean you're yodeling at home? Because I love that. <laughs> no. Um, I wouldn't eat. Behind the scenes, eat. they're trying to get me to yodel, and I refuse. Sorry. I was like, I wouldn't like go out of my way to eat the spree spark on there, but like if you if you did eat a little bit of it, it's it's food safe. I just wouldn't turn into a beaver and eat the whole thing. Right. So don't forget to check out Crow and their website and all the great things they do here in the community um, to help our local native wildlife. I've definitely taken bunnies and birds and all kinds of things out there. Um, and then join us two weeks from now because we do these every other week. So in two weeks, we will be doing the Spanish board. So... For everybody who made fun of my French and made fun of the Italian, I might actually be able to pr pronounce a couple Spanish words, hopefully after like 10 years in school. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So maybe, you know, I'll get less heckling for my pronunciation of things. Nothing bad will happen if you eat the tree bark. I just can't imagine it actually... Uh, taste that great i feel like it's a weird texture in your mouth but it's food safe so you know i guess if you really like the taste of spruce knock yourself out <laughs> so again crow thanks for being here and uh join us again in two weeks for our spanish event do you want to say good night thank you all good night <laughs>